Welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to jump on the CT3 and we're starting to clean the gas tank. Uh, I've already uh, pulled the petcock off and I put a, I just made a, uh, a plate here with a gasket that I made. These seem to fit all the Suzuki's and the Yamaha's, so I uh, use the same one on both of them. Uh, anyway, I've, I've just drained out the acetone. I had acetone sitting in the tank for overnight, and I shook that up. To, the reason with this one was it had a bunch of uh, pre-mix in the bottom that was allowed to dry, so I had to get all that out. And there's not a lot of rust in it, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the metal rescue in it. And that's what's gonna stay in it at least tonight and maybe two days uh, to, to get out any rust that is in there. And there's not much, but we're gonna, we're gonna clean it out. And we're also gonna work on the petcock a little bit. So let me get the overhead here and I'll show you what I'm doing. This is where we're at, and actually I've cleaned this up a lot. I, I probably should have just showed it to you before I cleaned it up. But this one here, the, uh, the reserve hole was running, uh, I mean, it was just caked in there. And I had to take a drill bit and just clean it out. And I did the same with the, uh, the main tube and all the other holes. You just find a drill bit that's pretty close and you can dig out all that sludge and stuff that's dried in there because all these orifices are the same size. Anyhow, I did that. Then I stuck it in a lacquer thinner overnight, let it soak, and that cleans up almost all of the metal parts uh, the screws and stuff, these here I'll have to take over and buff on a wire wheel. But uh, I tell you, the price for the gaskets is just terrible. And let me tell you what I, I have some and I've had them quite a while because I do a lot of these. But just this gasket here, see this, this one here is, it's gone. This one right here is $27.29 right now. I don't think I paid that for it, but I probably paid pretty close. Had them quite a while. Uh, this little flat washer that goes here, it doesn't really need to be flat, but it's $7. Uh, then you've got the little uh, flat washers here, they're actually a washer with some rubber on them that go on the bolts. They're $5 a piece. And then you've got this one that fits in this groove. And it's $19. So I'm not doing any of that. Actually, I just went on eBay and there's a a gentleman in New York, I think, that sells a kit that will do everything, I believe, except these two washers here. And, you know, you can use a fiber washer or something in place of the rubber ones. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rummage around, see if I can't find a fiber washer. But this washer, or this O-ring doesn't need to look like this. I've got just a regular O-ring here, and all you have to do is get it in the groove. And what I do, or have done in the past, is I just put a little cement on these, a little contact cement, and then, you know, they'll, they'll eventually stick in there. You may have to hold it a little bit. But I think that's what he does too. He just sends you a round gasket. Uh, so I'm buying his kit mostly for this one. And it looks just like this, except that it doesn't have the little dinky hole right here. It's got four big ones, but it looks like it's the same. So I'm paying $16.29, uh, I think, for the kit. 
So I'm paying that for this. And then the other O-rings, uh, I'm basically getting for free. But anyhow, this, this here doesn't need to be a flat one. I've got a nice little O-ring here that will work there just fine. And when you tighten this up, you don't, you don't tighten it tight. You just tighten it up till it stops and then give it maybe a half turn more. That's all you need on that. So that, that does everything except this. So I'm buying this kit to get that. And uh, the next thing that I need to show you is when you, when you do these, Again, you're going to see my little piece of glass come out here. And I just take some 400 wet and dry paper and I work on this piece right here. Just keep that. See, it's, it's higher on the outside than the inside. And you just keep working that until you can get that down to where it's uh, uniform. See, we're gaining on it. It's not going to take very much. I just use a little soap and water on my paper here. It helps uh, keep, uh, keep the grit and stuff clear as you're lapping it. There's just a lot of things that you can use a little piece of glass like this for. And this is just another one of them. But even with a, a new seal, if you don't do this, you'll probably end up with a leak. So just keep that in mind. These things are getting pretty old. See, we're almost there. That one little spot where it was open where the corrosion got in there, that's going to be the last thing to clean up. But we're getting it. You don't want to sit there and do it all day because, you know, your little uh, wave washer that goes in there, that's got to take up any slack. But if you've got a new rubber washer in there, seal, you shouldn't have any trouble. I never have had. Uh, when I do these, I just usually go down until I clean them up and then uh, just put all my new rubber washers in there, rubbers and seals. It's just ridiculous what some of that stuff costs because it just, it just doesn't matter. You know, I've had people ask me about copper head gaskets and you know I'm I'm still buying them if I can get them but I tell you what it, it, it just if you anneal them heat them up with a with propane torch that will make them soft enough where they can seal again of course they don't have that little raised um, ring around them so probably not quite as good, but as long as you lap your cylinder and your head, you're not going to have any trouble with a with an annealed uh, head gasket. Because see, they're getting kind of expensive. They're up there seventeen, eighteen dollars, and base gaskets, yeah, they're they're pretty expensive too. I think they're close to ten for most bikes. You know, like. You can make any of those. You know, of course, the copper head gasket, you couldn't unless, unless you have some copper stock laying around. But, you know, it's just, you've got to save where you can. So that's pretty good right there. I think that'll, that'll take care of everything. And what I'm going to do here before I uh, put this back together is I'm going to take it over to the bead blaster and I'm going to turn it down to about uh, 60 psi, and I'm going to I'm going to work inside around this gasket surface, up the tube, and down in the hole here a little bit. Anywhere that there's corrosion, 
I was able to get the majority out with my drill bit, but there's still some in there, and I want that out of there because I don't want it uh, softening up from the gas and starting to get in the carburetor. So let me go over there and take care of that. Okay, so got that cleaned up pretty nice, and I went. I sprayed the bead blaster down the tube, and in here, and in here, everywhere there was corrosion. And now, before I put it together, of course I got to wait on the gasket to come in, but before I put it together, I'll run it all through the ultrasonic cleaner to get rid of any of that that may be in there. And I did, I just, I've got one of these Harbor Freight uh, fiber gasket kits. They're pretty reasonable, I think it's seven or eight bucks. You get a lot of goodies in there. And they've got one there that is a 10 millimeter or a six millimeter and fits these just perfect. So you don't need to, to buy those expensive $5 and seven cent a piece gaskets. These will work just fine. And of course, these are the ones that mount the, uh, you know, it goes on right here to make sure you don't have ga or gas seeping down around the threads and coming out here. Fiber works really good and it won't, it won't uh, disintegrate from the gas. So the next thing I need to do here is to uh, go ahead and get the gas tank over and get the uh, metal rescue in it. And uh, I'll see you over there. One thing I want to show you too is the gas cap on these. Very easy to uh, uh, put a new gasket in it and I do have one. And uh, these I believe come from KDI. Uh, they've got a whole kit. I think there's a little piece in here too. These you just kind of slip it on the outside of this w big washer affair. And I believe you just pull this little clip out. Uh, make sure you block off the hole here so you don't drop it in there. And you install that little rubber piece in there too. I'll show you when I do it. Uh, but right now I just want to, I've got it blocked off here on the bottom. And it seeps a little there, but it's not going to be enough to, it didn't even wet the floor. So let me get ready to start filling this up. Okay, like it's not rocket science. I just, uh, just start filling it up. And you do want to get it full for the, uh, you know, if you happen to have any gas or uh, rust around the uh, gas cap area, I always try to bring it up. It'll bubble up a little bit from time to time. You'll get an air pocket. So as it, as it does that, you'll want to fill it, you know, keep it full. So I'm sure you don't need to watch me fill this whole thing. Just about to the top there now, so I just take it easy and fill up the remainder. And I've got some boards here, and what I do is I just kind of jack up the back, try to get that opening as level as I can. I think that looks about right. That way I can bring it all the way up. I don't have a lot of rust in there, but if I did, it would take it out too. The one thing about this uh, metal rescue, it doesn't, it doesn't bother paint or anything like that. This here is not good paint to start with, but I think they did themselves a injustice by painting over the original paint myself but anyhow that's not our worry uh, it needs it needs to be about 70 degrees to work 70 or above to work good so i've got it's best for me in my shop to keep this up on the bench away off you know off the ground because the floor this time of year is cool and i have to leave my heater up i usually shut her down to about 60 at night but I'll leave it up probably at 68 and uh, it should be fine. So, and I, I imagine it'll take two days at that temperature 
I'll just leave it in. I'm not in any hurry, so we'll just leave it in. And as this, uh, you get an air bubble once in a while, just fill it up a little bit. And just to show you again what I do use, it's uh, Metal Rescue. I've used the other uh, popular one too, and I don't, I don't like it because it's sticky and it molds and it's just kind of nasty in my opinion. It is cheaper, that's for sure, but I always come back to this. I, like I say, I've tried the other and it just doesn't work for me and it just feels funny and nasty and uh, I just, I don't use it. Other people swear by it and you may too, but it's not for me. up here and we're just removing this uh, little e-clip here in the middle and you pull that off and all your rubber parts are right here that's the other piece okay you get this piece that goes on the outside that's this and then you know, I think this goes in there too. It's just missing. <laughs> I think that's the deal. So this comes out of there. Oh, there it is right there. I was going to say, I thought I'd used all those parts in there before. Okay, so that one goes in there. It's got these three little tits, and you got a place for them there. So they'll go like that. And you've got the washer. And this little piece here and it'll go like this but I'm gonna go I'm gonna step over and clean all this stuff up before I put it together okay. get it cleaned up pretty good so uh, first thing you need to do is get this piece here and you see these two little notches here you need to find those notches inside the groove here. Let me see if I, can, if I can find them, then I can show them to you maybe. Right there. Okay, there's one, and the other one is right there. So those two notches need to go where those are. First of all, you want to get this in there, and that's this this piece right here is going to fit in that groove right there so you find the notches one's here and one's there ideally i think if you get one started uh, the other one will just fall in place there and there's groove all the way around in there that that holds that yeah i've got it and that's, that's so you have a, a uh, vent. Okay, then you've got this piece here, and you've got the, the three little tits right here. They correspond with those. So they go just like that. And then you've got this piece kind of holds it all together and then this piece here goes on the outside that kind of really holds everything together It's easier said than done. You just got to keep stretching. This actually might be one of those places where a little soap and water might help a little. Okay, little three little tits are still there. Got our spring.
and this fits right over that. I, I think I will just put a little soap and water on that. Makes that slide over that a little better. And then get your E-clip back on there. You get a pair of pliers. like that. Oops, not quite there. There. Okay. Should be good to go. And just get it back on there. Okay, guys, there you have it. Uh, not much to this whole clean up and everything. This tank, it it looks worse than it is. The inside's actually pretty good. Uh, the outside just, I don't know what, what they had in mind when they did that, but uh, like I said, that's not our problem. Uh, like I say, I just went through there. You've got to get the premix, the oily stuff, sludgy, whatever out of the bottom. The acetone does that. Just let it soak overnight, uh, pour it, pour that back into the can that's what I do because I can use it over and over and over because all the debris goes to the bottom of the can so I just put it back in there use it many times uh, once you once you drain it out uh, leave the lid open for about five or ten minutes and all the acetone that's left in there will evaporate it's very quick to evaporate and uh, you know, just make you a, a plate or something like I did that bolts onto the bottom of that. Pretty easy to do. And like I said, I found that most all the Suzuki's and the Yamaha's use the same bolt pattern. So that's pretty cool. So uh, just make up a plate, make you a gasket that goes there and block it off. And we just put our uh, metal rescue in there. In two or three days, I don't know. I, I'm not in a hurry because I had to order that uh, gasket set, uh, the little rubber thing that I'm only using that out of. And, uh, you know, it probably won't be here until close to the end of the week. So once that comes in, I can go ahead and, and build up the uh, uh, petcock, get that ready to go. And, you know, my biggest thing was, you know, you don't have to pay the price for a lot of that stuff that Yamaha or Suzuki or any of the OEMs, uh, you know, most of the time their parts are pretty reasonable, but that is, that's stupid. You know, that kind of money for rubber O-rings, that just doesn't work for me. And like I said, you don't have to have that oblong O-ring. You can, uh, you can stretch that thing out, put your little contact cement in the bottom of that and get it in the groove and just hold it there till it sticks and you're good to go. Just stick it up there, bolt it in and everything's going to be just fine. And the little fiber washers on the screws, another uh, kind of a cheap out way to do it. But, you know, this stuff can just, they can put you in the poorhouse if you do this, uh, all this OEM stuff all the time, there's just, especially the rubber parts, it just, I don't know whether rubber is a, uh, a hard to come by commodity in Japan or what, but you know, it doesn't have to be that way. Just find you an O-ring, make it, you know, make it fit. Buy you one of those sets like I've got from Harbor Freight there's, they're about 10 or 15 bucks, and I use stuff out of there every day. And, you know, you can buy separate O-rings from uh, uh, McMaster Car or something like that. If you measure them up and everything, you can get them. But even doing that's pretty expensive. But I do that with, with primarily the uh, O-rings for the carburetors. I just measure those up, order them, and... I keep them with the part number so that when that part number gets low, I just order some more. But anyhow, hey, you know, just uh, 
you know, I won't be putting this all back together in, in this video. I, I think you can get the gist. Uh, we rebuilt the cap. I went through rebuilding the petcock. And like I said, just go out there and find you alter, alternates for some of this stuff because it's just BS to have to pay $27 for that uh, selector valve uh, seal. Uh, like I said, the, the aftermarket stepped up in this situation. You can buy the whole kit for $16.95. That's less than that one gasket. And you've got everything else except for the uh, bolts. And there again, Harbor Freight, little fiber washer assortment for seven or eight bucks. And you can use it for a lot of other things. Anyhow, thanks for going along on the ride. And we'll see you next video.